really, really, zigga zigga, whatever that means. Um, want to be my lover, uh, blast, get me my friends, and make it last forever. Taking it too easy. That, uh, blast, who's calling me for heaven's sake? Mount Batten residence, Isola Nubla. Hi, uh, Hugo, it's, it's TGV. How are you? Uh, I hope I'm not calling at a bad time. Well, I'm frightfully busy. Whatever do you require? Uh, well, well, I'm having a tough time deciding on, on what watch I should uh, buy next. Ah, the old analysis paralysis. Well, there are so many great options out there. Dear boy, if you seek guidance in pairing the finest of wines with the freshest of humans, or hosting an opulent rave, I'm your chap. Um, okay. As for watches, I'm hardly the one to ask. I shan't debase myself by wearing anything other than solid gold. Right, but, but surely there must be something that, that uh, takes your liking that you can recommend. Well, you certainly don't need another ruddy Rolex. Far too common. The park warden, who brings me my fresh goats, wears one for heaven's sake. Why don't you stick to family tradition and get a Jager Le Couture? <laughs> right, you mean uh, JLC? Yes, darling. Okay, I'll, I'll check them out. Thank you, Hugo. And please, stop calling me darling. It's just weird. Of course, darling. Mustache. EastEnders is on in a minute. Okay. Uh... We'll chin wag another time. Okay. Toodle pip. Ciao, ciao. That anybody feels the way I do about you now. Okay, hi guys, and welcome to the show. Today, I'm going to discuss my watch collecting goals. This is something I do um, annually, and I'll do a wristwatch check. I'm wearing the Tudor sub, believe it or not, on... <laughs> The bracelet, no NATO in sight, I know, I know. But actually this has got to do with what we're discussing today because I've ever so nearly came to trading this in for a different model. I'll talk about that in a moment. So, um, yeah, and don't forget guys, do share your Grail watch goals in the comments below. I'd love to hear what you're considering, what you're pining after, what you're saving up for, um, what do you think I should take a look at? Because I still haven't found anything that has taken that long-term goal. And guys, I, I tend to, as you know, I tend to sp split it into short-term, medium-term, long-term. But my long-term goal has not changed. It's the Roman Gautier Insight Micro Rotor. So I guess I, I should discuss that first. The reason why it's, it still holds such a, an important place in my heart is because I did the, the video, as, as you've seen, to the, um, to the factory. I met the, the uh, Roman Gautier himself. He talked about how he created it and seeing it made and manufactured and all the different steps. You get this kind of deep connection to the watch and the brand. And I love the fact that he's independent. Um, I love the fact that it's very unique. It's not something everybody has. The design is beautiful. It's very tastefully done. Uh, the logic behind it being visible, the micro rotor from both sides, the finishing, it's discreet. It's a, a great size for me, but at the same time, it's the pinnacle of luxury. I mean, he's an award-winning watchmaker. If you haven't seen that video, have a look. And uh, it hasn't really changed my long-term goal. I've investigated Lange. We've taken a look at FP Jean. Uh, I'm going to be looking at JLC again. So I am trying to experience as much as I can, especially from the watch box inventory, to see if there's anything that can usurp the throne, so to speak, of that grail watch. But so far, nothing has. As I approach 40, yeah, it's a lot of money. It's something you buy once in a lifetime. And I think I, I could possibly do it. And, you know, I've got plenty of time to deliberate. Anyway, in terms of short term, because I think medium term is where there's a lot to discuss. In, in terms of short term, I really want to get, and I'm literally my trigger finger is itching right now because uh, I've, 
I, I will buy this on eBay fairly soon. The DW5035E-7. It's a 35th year anniversary translucent. It's actually called Glacier Gold because the flo free floating case that has made G-Shock so successful is in gold. I love it because the G-Shock square has become, to me, the defining, G I mean, it is the defining G-Shock. Nobody can deny, historically speaking, since 1983. I've looked at the, the G-Shock minis, I've looked at different models, and I always go back to the square, mainly because it's of its fit, its historic importance. Seeing that a part of that technology that has defined it and made it so successful also is a really nice feature to have. The only problem is it's about $300 from Japan, which for a G shock is rather dear for me i love the fact that they're they're affordable and and fun and you know you can bash them about this will be a little bit more special so uh I'm, and of course i'm going to keep my current dw50 the, the quintessential classic um so i'm going to do that soon let's discuss the medium term goals for me i have stated that i'd like to have something german made in the collection i've sold my zin 104 Hashtag seller's remorse. I've bought and sold that watch multiple times now. And of course, you guys know I'm obsessed with the Navi timer. So I thought maybe I could kill two birds with one stone and get the 90, is it the 903 or 904? I can never remember. Uh, somebody please tell me. But you know, essentially it is a Navi timer because uh, Zin bought the rights. So it's not a homage, it's not a rip off. They legally could make it when Breitling were going through a bit of a funny period in the 70s. I do my watch collection review, uh, state of the collection every year and I've, I've sold the 806. It was just a little bit too fragile when you pay almost five grand for a vintage watch and you're wear, worried to wear it and enjoy it. It becomes a, a safe queen and I don't really like doing that too much. So I stuck with the Cosmonaut because it's just so unique, that 24 hour dial, the way it displays time. Yeah, it's very bewildering at first, but it's one of the coolest chronographs, in my opinion, I've ever experienced. Uh, and then of course I saw the automatic, but and, and a huge seller's remorse to that, the blue dial, which I'm probably gonna buy back. So either I'm gonna go Zin or Navi Timer from Brightling. And I've stated this, I am obsessed with the Navi Timer. It's the only watch I could seriously have a different one for each day of the week. I never get sick of it. It just brings so much excitement. And that at the end of the day is what watches, well, for me, it's about enjoyment, right? I mean, people collect for different reasons, but for me, it very much is that. So Navi Timers is something I'm, I'm definitely always gonna go back towards. What about Seiko? And I have to show you this before I forget. Um, this is um, a gift from my friend, John. Da -da 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 -da. <laughs> Isn't that cool? That is that is really cool. So thank you, John. Beautiful silk. Um, anyway, so as you could tell, big Seiko fans here. Uh, but I have to say, at the entry level, I'm done with Seiko. I mean, famous, <laughs> famous last words. But I, wrote, I recently posted a, an image on Instagram where I had my land CNA collection, right? The, the, the mini Seiko, holy trinity for me. The Giugiaro designed racing chronograph, the Ripley, which has tripled in value, which is crazy. Tarted up to the nines, super modded SKX, which took three attempts, but I finally nailed it. And then of course the beloved Flighty, which I just celebrated five years with that watch. I I'm complete there. I, d I don't need any more entry level Seikos. Those three do everything I want. Bit of nostalgia, that military tough diver, you know, and then of course the, the flighty that just does it all, you know. However, I will probably go a little bit high end, possibly vintage for the Seiko. And I want it to commemorate a trip to Japan. I've always wanted to go. I have been discussing this with my wife. We're going to probably go together. I would love to do a, a tour of the, either the museum or the factory and immortalize it with buying a Seiko in Japan. Now I have said this before, but unfortunately when I wanted to do it, or fortunately I should say, uh, then I, I, I had to move to Philly and the whole partnership with, with Watchbox, which has you know, just been fantastic. So I, I couldn't do that last year. This year, by the end of the year, I want to go to Japan. I, I want that to happen. It's gonna cost a lot of money, but I, it's a once in a lifetime experience and remembering it with a watch, I think, you know, and a Seiko, I mean, 
You know, I st I'm still buying Seiko clocks and bits and bobs if you've seen my war room update. So, of course, I'm going to see something on eBay and then, <laughs> you, know, you know how it goes, right? What else? AP, I'm still slightly obsessed with the Royal Oak. Not so much these days. I do adore AP more than Patek. It just speaks to me, especially their, their older um, versions. I've considered upgrading, doing what I did with my day day, going to Watchbox taking it in and upgrading to the Quantiem, the Perpetual Calendar, which is essentially a step up from my little um, moon phase. Same enamel dial, although it's got the um, tri-compacts layout with the extra complications, highly underrated. It's also the, the Scrooge watch because Bill Murray wore it in that very uh, classic Christmas comedy, if you've seen it. Dramatically underrated because of course, Everybody wants the Royal Oak, or they, when you go dress watches Perpetual Calendar, they, they, they go Patek naturally. So it's in this kind of strange, undervalued um, area. So I might do that medium term, just to keep me occupied while I save up for the Roman Gautier. So let's talk about the Tudor a little bit. What happened? Well, I came this close to trading in. A snowflake came into the inventory at Watchbox. I went in there, I held them side by side. I have to say mine is better condition and I'm gonna be vulgar and talk about money, but there's a, it's an important factor to consider here. It's, there's about three grand difference because the snowflake as you guys know it's highly lusted after it's the one that has the military provenance and historicity to it if you've seen my top 10 watch books video i recently acquired a, a history of the marine national and tudor it's a fantastic book it's the definitive icon to me in terms of the tudor submariners i deliberated mm, sell this for five put in three more get the snowflake and i wasn't quick enough Sure enough, somebody the next day bought it, right? And I missed out. Then I was thinking, well, you know, you, maybe maybe you lucked out because what's wrong with the, the Mercedes hands? Because all it is is a different handset, different uh, markers on the dial, the square markers, right? Same movement, same case, same crystal, same bezel, same everything else. Uh, in fact, actually, this is a little bit better because it's got the, a slightly updated solid link, not the folded links that the Snowflake has. But it hasn't got the the allure, the, the 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 famous. It's not the. It hasn't got that X factor, right? I don't know. I'm still. I, part of me is like relieved, and then the other part of me is like, damn it! Oh, I missed out. You know? What do you guys think? I mean, do you think it's ridiculous play, paying three grand just to have a different handset and dial? I mean, on one hand, it's a better investment, but then I don't buy things for investment. I buy things for enjoyment. So there we go. What else? Oh, the Rolex Daytona. I'm not going to rush into that. I'm I'm going to spend some time to think about it because I'm worried, as as you've seen from the review. I mean, yeah, I love that watch. If I had Ducktail's money, I'd buy it tomorrow, right? But but I don't. <laughs> uh, I like the two tone, the black dial, uh, rather than the steel, all steel I reviewed. It's gorgeous. I love the story. It's a watch I never really liked in the past, but typical, of course, like the Explorer, when you spend some time with it and get to know it, you become more appreciative uh, of the story that went behind it, how it evolved and all this stuff. I, I hope I conveyed that in the video review because I think it, it, the, the history certainly plays a, um, a big part, but it's a lot of money. And, and like I said, actually, I said this in the review and a lot of you said it in the comments, you could buy three Speedmasters for that, you know, and the Speedmaster is just as iconic. And if not um, more, don't get me wrong. I love the Speedmaster. I've owned seven of them, the manual wine, moon, endless automatic versions, the reduced the racing version, the first Amiga space version, you know, so trust me, I, I, I used to be a Speedmaster guy, but the thing is you fall out of love sometimes with watches. It just happens. The Navi timer came along and actually incidentally, it's in the watch winder behind me, the Fortis Cosmonaut. They kind of made me fall out of love with the Speedmaster. Don't get me wrong, I adore this. It's still the, the iconic design it is, but I fell in love with something else more that gave me more pleasure. So of course I'm gonna pursue it. And I haven't really looked back since. That's just me, you know, you could be the other way around. But this is why it links into the Rolex Daytona because I've got to make sure that it's real love and not a watch crush because the Daytona, I'm gonna spend 
a hell of a lot of money. Uh, you know, an almost obscene, vulgar amount of money on a on a watch. I'm letting it marinate. I'm letting it, you know, just bubble away there. Uh, what else have I got here? Yeah, that's about it, actually. So to summarize, uh, a lot more G-Shocks and fun with Casio at the entry level. In the medium term, a commemorative Seiko and more Navi timers. Yeah, I need to investigate Amiga a little bit more as well. So, you know, I have been toying with the idea of Planet Ocean, ridiculous. Again, it could be just a passing fad, <laughs> you know? And then the higher end, I'm still hunting around. I'm still gonna investigate. I wanna look at JLC, I wanna look at uh, Breguet, see if there's something else that captures my heart more than the Roman Gautier. But that's about it. Guys, do share your Grail watch goals, medium, long term, short term, in the comments below. I'd love to hear what you're considering and any nominations I should investigate. But that's about it from me. Thank you very, very much for watching. Please don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it and found it useful. And as always, guys, I will catch you in the next one. Okay, ciao.